getting the night TK-2000 ready for a turkey season. William Hovey Smith, 2016. I'm the author of Extreme Muzzleloading, and here we're getting the most advanced muzzleloading shotgun ever ready for a turkey season. This is Hovey Smith with Hovey's Outdoor Adventures. And today we're going to talk about Tony Knight's black powder shotguns, and most especially about the TK-2000, which is on the table in front of me. Tony Knight is well known for producing his inline guns as a replacement for conventional side hammer muzzleloaders. He pioneered this field in a commercial manner. Private individuals had done something like this many, many times before, but he was the first to really take this concept and make commercial guns on a large scale. The TK-2000 here is the last and best modification of Tony Knight's original striker-fired gun as a muzzle-loading shotgun. In striker-fired guns, all you do is pull back the striker here. It catches on a sear. You take it off safety. There is a secondary safety here that you must make sure is screwed out. And you aim at your target and you pull the trigger and bang, that's all there is to it. It's a very simple system for a muzzle-loading rifle or shotgun. And Tony saw no need to replace it when he continued to upgrade his basic striker-fired shotguns uh, to, the, to, to the TK-2000. And he kept this as the only shotgun in his line. Although the, the shotgun barrels could have been put on, well, any other thing he manufactured, but he kept this as a shotgun as being a very simple, foolproof, relatively inexpensive system. You can find such guns from night with number 11 primers, with musket cap primers like this, perhaps even a few with this style of plastic disc jackets, or as modern manufactured right now with the red jacket, which was the last design produced while Tony lived. So all three of these styles of guns will be seen. And I have seen them all, but the TK-2000 is certainly the most advanced and likely the most common, I think, now. So, uh, what do you need to make this thing work? Well, this is a shotgun, after all. And this is a very powerful shotgun as manifested in this version. Uh, Tony... He liked magnum charges and he liked high velocities. So he made this shotgun so that it could shoot two and a quarter ounces of shot. Yeah. And over a hundred grains of power. Boom. Now that is a load. He backboard that choke so that it would offer a maximum pattern at longish ranges. Well, I'm an older guy, and I don't like to take that much recoil. As you see, I have fitted a butt plate to this that is adjustable, so that it really fits me. I also have a scope on it, which both adds weight, as well as allows me to make precision sight adjustments. This has a screw-off externally threaded choke right here. Yeah. So there are choke options on the shotgun. The gun actually comes with adjustable iron sights. And because these heavy charges often shoot lower than one would normally expect, yeah, you need to have adjustable sights to, or a scope or a red dot or something to take full advantage of this gun's potential. Otherwise, these heavy charges of shock will oftentimes shoot low on the target. 
Well, let's talk about powders. This gun takes granular powders. It does not take the pellets because this is actually a 12 bore gun and there are no 12 bore pellets. So you load loose powder. And you may load double uh, FG black powder. You may load RS Paradex shotgun powder. Or you may load granular triple seven or uh, several of the other granular black powder substitutes in this gun. The charge I like is 100 grains of powder and approximately one and a half ounces of shot. The shot I use is heavy shot. A heavy shot is the densest shot commercially available. You may or may not be able to buy as loose shot. I was at one time and I got me about 25 pounds and that's what I've been shooting on ever since. It is irregular in size and this has uh, all everywhere from about number sevens to about number fours. There were even larger particles in here up to twos and greater which I have sieved out to make a more uniform shot. You may carry it in plastic tubes like this which are convenient to carry in the field or if you're more of a traditionalist you can carry it in a conventional shot pouch like this one. Yeah. Uh, this is available from Dixie Gunworks, by the way, if you're not inclined to make your own. Okay. Now, about powders. Turkey hunters are a strange lot. Uh, we may carry a gun loaded for an awful long time during the turkey hunting season. Now, our Georgia season lasts for two full months. Uh, we may hunt in rainy weather. We may hunt in... A wet weather and drippy weather and blazing hot weather and swarm with mosquitoes are all in a very span of a very few days of hunting. Uh, yeah, or maybe even even the same day. So uh, the gun is exposed to wet. I find that traditional black powder, in particular double FG black powder. When you are loading up a gun like this, it may have a charge in it for an awful long time. Gives the most reliable results. Or all powders, including the black powder substitute powders, are to some degree hydroscopic. That is, they will absorb atmospheric moisture. Hmm. Therefore, uh, I use that powder that is least absorbent and I find that to be traditional black powder. Somewhat surprising to most people. Triple uh, Seven is particularly notorious for being hydroscopic and is more so than black powder in my experience. Therefore, for this load, where I'm not seeking absolutely maximum velocity, but reliability and functionality, I'm loading with 100 grains of black powder. Now this is a flask that friend uh, Bill Krantz made for me and it contains uh, more than enough powder to take out on a turkey hunt. On turkey hunts, uh, you're going to be fortunate indeed if you fire two or three shots. So you don't need to take a great wad of components and pounds of ingredients out there in the field with you to drag around. You don't have enough junk to carry anyway. Believe me, <laughs> you are. So uh, you don't need... Uh, a tremendous amount of powder, like a huge horn full or anything like that. Uh, this much or even uh, a couple of charges in something like this will do you very, very well indeed. In fact, something sealed in plastic is even more imperious to moisture than this traditional horn is. And that is what WFG black powder looks like if you happen not see it. Okay? Now, we need wads. Yeah. Just as you load a regular shotgun shell, uh, you put your powder down. And this is a powder measure, by the way, set at 100 grains. And so you drop your powder down the bore and you load your wads. 
These are some old shot cups that I bought from Herders decades ago. And they're split, but they keep the heavy shot from abrading the sides of the barrel because it is, it is abrasive and it will do that. So we have a measure here, Boof. one of these plastic tubes cut off. It happens to have a lid on it, okay, and this contains my charge of shot, which is about an ounce and a half of heavy shot. It is denser than lead shot, so it takes less volume, but it is also more effective. This wad has a bit of plastic torn off and placed in the box. What happens is, when this flies through the air, the shot separates from the wad, and then this plastic stuff comes out. And it puts added resistance on this wad and causes the wad not to shoot through the charge of shot and actually scatter it more than it otherwise might have been. So this plastic material keeps this wad well away from the shot column, which is rapidly approaching your animal while this is falling down lower and lower and lower. And this just drops it faster. All right. But we're still talking about powder. So, uh, over the powder, I load a 11, 11 gauge card wad. You can get these at Dixie Gunworks. The 11 gauge wads fit this gun tighter than 12 gauge wads. Remember this is turkey hunting, and you're probably going to only fire one shot. So the tight fitting wad in the bore makes sure that you get maximum velocity out of that shot, as well as a maximum seal. Now this wad doesn't have a shot cup on it. Most plastic, most modern wads do. Therefore, I do something else. Between this wad and this wad containing the shot, I load some cream of wheat. This acts like a filler wad or a buffer wad and again helps the seal. I use this in several others of my guns. And this is how much I carry with me in the field. Again, you're not going to reload a tremendous number of shots out there. So there's no sense in calling a bunch of stuff out. Again, you could also store it in little plastic tubes just like this for even greater weather resistance. But you don't have this out in all kinds of weather. Now, what other things do we use? It is significant that this turkey hunting business is very often done when you go out in full dark or come back in full dark. Hence, a good flashlight. This is a stream light. It is made to hazmat specifications. This is a light that you can actually back a truck over the top of and push it down in the mud and it'll come out still functioning. Yeah, this is a rugged light. And it's also a good one. Now, I also carry a spare one in my kit as well. So I have two flashlights in case the battery should expire on this. Another significant thing is you want to know how far that turkey is out there. A rangefinder. Yeah. Need one of these. So this happens to be a Bushnell. And so this will range your turkey out here and range your decoys. And I do this ranging as I set up and I measure some objects out there in front of me in the field so I have an idea, okay, uh, that's 50 yards, that's 40 yards, that's 30 yards. We're getting kill zone now. Anything that walks in within that 30 yards is a dead turkey. Yeah, I can take him now. For sure. 
I have other videos where I describe a minimalist turkey hunting outfit, what I actually take with me in the field. In Georgia, we may use turkey decoys, and I do use them, and yeah, you know, I find these effective. We also, of course, use turkey calls. I have a variety of those. Uh, sometimes one call will work, sometimes another call will work, sometimes absolutely no call will work for nobody. But, uh, yeah, 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 that happens. We've gone through our pre-hunt preparation. We've watched our turkey hunting videos. We've been talking to other hunters about turkey stories, uh, including one from former President Carr. Uh, just a few weeks ago, I was in Atlanta at a function and happened to meet President Carr. And he told us about one of his turkey hunting experiences a few years ago. Now, when President Carter hunts anymore, of course, he has plenty of land down in South Georgia, so he hunts on his own land, but he's escorted everywhere he goes by people, by members of the Secret Service, being an ex-president. So he and his entourage uh, goes out there, and he sets up by himself, and his other Secret Service agents are somewhere around him, close. And he proceeds to call turkey. Now that season, he has already taken one turkey. And he's setting up in his field, and he had his gun, and he's getting ready, and he sees uh, two turkeys coming in the field, and he calls, and he gets closer, and he calls, and he gets closer, and he calls. <laughs> Okay, it looks like he's going to be able to get one of these. As a matter of fact, they see his decoys and they're coming straight for him. Well, between him and this turkey, he's purposely set himself up with a bush in this field in front of him. So the bush is here and the turkey decoys are over here. And he figures when they pass by this bush, then that's going to give him a chance to put his calls down and get his gun, cock his gun, aim at the turkey. As soon as he puts his head out beyond that bush, he's going to shoot. So that's the plan. And that's pretty much what comes down. So the turkey's come through the field and he sees them going like this, both of them. Then, all right. He puts his call around so he got the gun. He's turned around good. He gets his gun, gets ready, pulls up there. Turkey head sticks is what sticks comes beyond the bush and squeezes, 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 Bam! spoon. And all of a sudden there's an appearance of dead turkeys all over the place. Burr! Yeah! When the Secret Service guys come to see what happened, there's what appears to be five dead turkeys on the ground. What? Well, uh, actually, not quite that many, because three of them were the decoys, which the flopping turkeys being shot uh, knocked down. But in fact, President Carter has killed two turkeys with one shot. Boom! He was paying such close attention to the first one that came around, they did not notice the second until it was flopping, dying in front of him. Hmm, what the dog? I enjoyed it. You may take two turkeys. President Carter had taken three turkeys. Well, he was hunting on his own land. He was hunting with the Secret Service folks, so he could have said nothing at all, but his conscience wouldn't let him. So he wrote a letter to the Department of Fish and Game and told the Fish and Game folks, hey, hey guys, I, I really messed up. I uh, took an illegal turkey, and this is exactly what has happened, and blah, 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 blah. All right. So they, he, in due time, got a letter back, and he said that, well, uh, we have received your correspondence, but we must take it up before the board to determine what action we will take. So in due time, uh, he gets another letter back from the fishing game, all on official stationery, etc., 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 to the effect that uh, you have broken the law. Uh, However, uh, you did come forward, you did confess, we understand exactly what happened, um, but we must nonetheless feel that we must take some action, uh, whether you be President Carter or no. So therefore, uh, the board uh, judges you uh, guilty of a game violation, and we are giving you a warning 
not to do this again. And so that was a result of President Carter's illegal turkey hunt. So such things happen. And so we're going to get out and we're going to shoot this gun and we're going to target it in and we're going to see where it shoots and make necessary side adjustments. So when we get our turkey, when we get it out there in front of us, we will know exactly where this gun patterns. We are seeing now a density of shots here. But now, this is Hovey Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. In extreme muzzleloading, I cover the use of muzzleloading shotguns for large and small game. We also talk about them in shooting and maintaining your muzzleloader, which is an e-book, and exclusively about muzzleloading smooth bores and hunting with muzzleloading shotguns and smooth bore muskets. I also have a series of business books under the Profit brand. The first of which of these is Ideas for New Businesses on How to Start Your Own Million or Billion Dollar Business. And here is a blurb about me and also about the book. Now, I am going to do a follow-up video that's going to show you the initial targeting of this gun and loading the TK-2000 and discuss some accessories that you really need. For more info on my books, blogs, and nearly 500 videos, you can go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.